Eating Well with Candace Food Guide, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. This slide presentation is an important tool for individuals, families, and communities to learn about and share ways of eating well, including traditional and store-bought foods. We will start by taking a look at what is inside the food guide in general, and then we'll look at how this food guide was created and what makes it special. The food guide is intended to help people two years of age or older and to make wise food choices that promote healthy living. Eating the right amounts of food and the right types of foods recommended will help you meet your needs for vitamins, minerals and other nutrients. It will also reduce the risk of many diseases and contribute to your overall health and well-being. In 2007, two national food guides were released, Eating Well in Candace Food Guide, an image that's on the left-hand side of the page, and Eating Well with Candace Food Guide, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis, on the right-hand side of the page. Each of these two food guides are tools to help Canadians make healthy food choices. Each is a guide to choosing healthy amounts and types of foods. Both food guides give recommendations for eating well based on science. How is this food guide different? There are many things that will be pointed out that are different uh, between the two food guides. This food guide is two pages shorter than the Eat Well Canada food guide. The main design on the cover is a circle instead of a rainbow. A circular design is meaningful to many Aboriginal communities and cultures representing balance, cycles of life, life and nature. This food guide reflects the importance of both traditional and store-bought foods for Aboriginal people. The store-bought foods on this food guide are generally available in rural and remote locations as well as in cities. The food guide also highlights the diversity of traditional foods across Canada and shows examples of foods that are representative of traditional foods from across the country. This food guide is not intended to represent all the food choices of the First Nations, Inuit or Métis. This slide shows a close-up of the inner and outer circle of the food guide. To use the food guide, first find your age and sex group at the top of the columns in the chart titled Recommended Number of Food Guide Servings Per Day. Next, look down the column for the number of food guide servings you need every day from each of the food groups, vegetables and fruits, grain products, milk and alter alternatives, meat and meat alternatives. Finally, look at the examples on the amounts of food shown as a food guide serving in the rows to the right of the chart. A food guide serving refers to the specific amount of food. The recommended number of food guide servings for each age and sex group and the size of a food guide serving provides a guideline for the recommended total amount of food for each food group per day. This slide shows an example of a typical breakfast. You would have two pieces of toast, one cup of orange juice, one cup of milk, and two poached eggs. How many food guide servings of each food group are you eating? The answer? Well, two pieces of toast is equal to food, two food guide servings of grain products. Make sure you pay attention to the size of the bread when you're counting these food groups. One cup of orange juice is equal to two food guide servings of vegetables and fruit. One cup of milk is equal to one food guide serving of milk. And two poached eggs is equal to one food guide serving from the meat and meat alternate groups. In each food group, some foods are especially nutritious. These foods are noted in bold print at the top of each food group now. The next few slides will take a closer look at these foods that are best choices for nutrition. Some examples of vegetables that will be in bold print include asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, green peas, romaine lettuce and spinach. Dark green vegetables are a rich source of folate. 
it is also recommended that you choose vegetables and fruits from the orange group. These would include things like carrots, pumpkins, orange colored squash, sweet potatoes. Orange vegetables are rich in carotenes, uh, which the body changes into vitamin A. Some fruits that fit into this category would include cantaloupe, mango, papaya, and apricot, which are also high in carotene. People eat these um, often uh, will notice that they uh, have lots of vitamin C in their diet. Does juice count as a serving in the food guide? If you look at the label on your juice, most often you'll see the high level of sugar um, that juices contain. So it is recommended that people choose vegetables and fruit more often than the juice. It also includes um, fiber, uh, which you don't get inside the juice, which your body also um, relies on and needs. Some traditional foods in the vegetables and food group would include squash, corn, fiddleheads and wild greens, and berries. Some of these foods were traditionally eaten um, that were traditionally eaten can now be found in stores. Uh, you'll find them fresh or frozen or canned. Um, choosing grain products. Uh, the food guide recommends that at least half of your grain products are whole grain. Example of whole grains are uh, barley, brown rice, oats, whole wheat and wild rice. Uh, whole grains are recommended to help people get enough fiber uh, in their diet. A diet rich in whole grains may also help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, which is heart, heart attacks and heart and stroke. Um, bannock would also fit into this food group, uh, but you could make a bannock healthier uh, by using whole wheat flour instead of white flour um, and by baking it rather than deep frying it. Choosing milk and milk alternatives. Uh, this food group emphasizes the importance of milk in the diet and it highlights alternatives such as fortified soya beverages, yogurt and cheese. Uh, fortified soya beverages contain added nutrients that make them good alternatives to milk. Two cups of milk are recommended each day for adequate amounts of vitamin D and it's important to choose low fat milk each day as it is an effective way to get your calcium and your vitamin D um, but uh, keep down the amount of fat uh, that you're um, including in your diet. Yogurt and cheese are also made from milk and are good sources of vitamins um, such as vitamin D and calcium. However, it is important to note that um, uh, yogurt and cheese have, you know, possibly a, um, a much lower amount of vitamin D that you're gonna, than you're going to get from uh, two cups of milk. So it's, it's better that you include two cups of milk uh, in order to get that vitamin D or the right amount of vitamin D. Uh, this slide shows uh, the foods that the uh, First Nations people traditionally uh, would eat and how they got their nutrition um, that is typically found inside milk. Um, they would get this from uh, some wild plants, seaweed, fish, uh, and its bones, shellfish, nuts, beans, uh, and bannock. Um, since the traditional foods are not eaten as much as they were in the past, many people are not getting that same amount of nutrients, um, so it's important that they drink the milk uh, or the fortified soya beverage. Um, in order to get the, the equivalent amount of nutrients that they got from those foods traditionally. Choosing meat and meat alternates. Um, lean store meats would include things like uh, lean hamburger, fish, turkey and chicken uh, with the skin removed uh, as well as cuts of beef and pork uh, with the visible fat removed and you would want to limit the high fat and high salt meats such as bacon or sausage or canned meats. Um, most wild meats like caribou, deer and moose have less fat than store meats and they have been included and incorporated into the First Nations Guide. Um, and to prepare meats with little fat, choose low fat cooking um, techniques such as stewing or broiling or braising, roasting and barbecuing. Eating fish, especially fatty fish, is associated with uh, a risk of heart disease and stroke. 
Uh, example of fatty fish would be uh, char, herring, mackerel, salmon, sardines, and trout. Uh, also in this food group are your beans, lentils, tofus, and other alt alternates. Uh, eating beans and lentils and tofu instead of meat can lower your saturated fat intake um, as these fo foods are very low in saturated fats. Um, and uh, the beans and lentils are a good source of dietary fiber as well. So um, some some great suggestions there. Some of the benefits of eating traditional foods include um, they have less fat, salt, and sugar than store-bought food products. Um, they have the essential nutrients uh, that are needed for good health. Uh, during the harvesting, people uh, are able to be physically active. And the spiritual and cultural importance, importance of harvesting and eating the traditional foods is, is really important as well. A small amount of fat is important to our health, um, but people often eat too much fat and too much of the type of fat, uh, saturated or transaturated fats, uh, that has been shown to be harmful to the health and to our hearts. Instead of using saturated or trans fat, use vegetable oils with unsaturated fats. These would include canola, olive or soya bean oils. For making better choices, you can use the nutritional facts table on food labels uh, and it will help you pick healthier food choices by looking at the amount of fat, sugar and sodium in products. Some foods should be limited because they are high in calories, fat, sugar or fat or sorry or, or salt and can contribute to obesity, diabetes, uh, heart disease and high blood pressure. Some of these foods would be things like pop, uh, flavored fruit drinks, candy, chocolate bars, cakes, pastries, um, donuts, granola bars, cookies, and the list goes on. Um, respect your body and try to choose healthier um, foods um, to keep a, a healthy body. The last slide of this presentation is being active every day. It's important uh, not only to follow the food guide for um, what you want to take into your body, but it's also important um, and it is recommended that you do 30 to 60 minutes of moderate physical activity every day. Um, children and uh, teens should aim at at least 90 minutes of activity per day. Um, so keep that in mind as you're eating well uh, to be active too. Some examples of things you could do, um, go for a walk, play some hockey or soccer, um, do some dancing, uh, anything to keep you up and about and moving.